Good morning. Thank you for joining us at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. I have a couple of quick announcements before we start our service. Along with our online worship services, we are gathering for worship in the back parking lot, drive-in style, remaining in our cars at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings until further notice. Join Pastor Leonard for coffee and conversation on Zoom at 9 a.m. on Thursdays. An invitation was sent out via email, but you can contact the church office if you, if you would like more information. Please keep in your prayers Sherry Desern, daughter of Brenda Duncan, Jean Knupp, who's dealing with breathing issues, Barry Sul Sullivan, who is suffering back pain again, Carol Jones Towery, daughter of Doris Jones, who had a double mastectomy, Debbie Benj, as she undergoes her chemo. Also pray for all those affected by COVID-19 as it continues to be a worldwide issue. If you need anything or have any questions, please call or email the church office. You can always check out our website, sselca.com, for more information. God's blessing to you all. Now let's begin our worship service. day of July in the year 2020. We're so glad that you can join us for worship here at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. Our first hymn is Let the Whole Creation Cry. We thank God for claiming us in holy baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for that holy gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us 
to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from the wounded side of Jesus, our Lord. And on this day, you showed us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us, O Lord, in your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The first reading comes from Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumph and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter, verses 15 through 25a. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want to, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I do that, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus spoke these words to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? Is it like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another? We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither drinking nor eating, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been landed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And now listen particularly to these words of comfort that Jesus gives. Jesus says, Come to me, all that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you. We gather this day to offer our thanks and our praise, telling you of our love for you in response to your first love for us. And we ask, O Lord, now that you might speak and that we might hear. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I love stories. One of my favorite stories is the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's a marvelous story. Three bears, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Little Baby Bear, fixed porridge for breakfast. It was a little too hot, so they went for a walk in the woods. While they were away, Goldilocks came scampering through the forest, and she came to this house, a house she had never seen before. She knocked on the door. No one answered, so she walked in. In the kitchen, she saw three bowls of porridge. She tasted the porridge in the big bowl, and it was too hot. She tasted the bowl of porridge in the middle side bowl, and it was too cold. She tasted the porridge in the little bowl, and it was just right. It was so good, she ate it all. She went into the living room, and she saw some chairs. She sat down in the great big chair, and it was too big. She sat down in a smaller chair, but it was still too big. Then she saw a small chair. She had a seat and it was just right. So she sat and she rocked and the chair broke to pieces. She went upstairs. She saw some beds. She laid down the great big bed and it was too hard. She laid down on the middle sized bed and it was too soft. She laid down on the smaller bed and it was just right. Felt so good, she went to sleep. A little bit later, the three bears came home. They walked into the kitchen and Papa Bear said, somebody has been eating my soup or my porridge. Mama Bear said, somebody's been eating my porridge. The baby bear said, somebody's been eating my porridge and it's all gone. <clears throat> they went into the living room. Papa Bear said, somebody's been sitting in my chair. Mama Bear said, somebody's been sitting in my chair. The baby bear said, somebody's been sitting in my chair and it's broken to pieces. They went upstairs into the bedroom. Papa bear said, somebody has been sleeping in my bed. Mama bear said, somebody has been sleeping in my bed. And baby bear said, somebody's been sleeping in my bed and here she is. About that time, Goldilocks woke up. She saw the bears and she ran down the steps out the door and never went back into that part of the forest again. What a wonderful story, and how many times I have told that story to so many children, especially our children. It's a great story. In fact, it's hundreds of years old. When that story came into cre being, being created, it wasn't Goldilocks that went to visit the bears. It was old fox, and the fox went to visit the bears. Later on, it was an old woman by the name of Silverlocks that went to visit the children, or the bears. Finally, in about 1851, the story changed from the fox to the old woman to Goldilocks. It was a young girl that went for a walk in the forest. So this old, old story has been so popular. Now let me tell you why I think it's been so popular. I think part of that has to do with the fact that Goldilocks is looking for something that is just right. And I believe that's the condition of all of us. 
We're looking for something that is just right. Something that's just perfect. Now, that doesn't always happen, but that's the goal, I think, of many of us. Think about it. If you watch the commercials on TV, they're talking to you about being just right or having something just right. If you'll take this medicine, you'll be just right. If you'll drive this car, it'll be just right for you. If you'll live in this house, it's just right. If you'll eat this food, if you'll drink this drink, it's just right. It's going to make you just right. It'll make you moving toward perfection. If you'll feed your dog this particular food, your dog will be just right. Think about it. A lot of the big events in our lives, we want them to be just right. It's a wedding day. I remember planning our weddings. We want it to be just right. The vacation, we want it to be just right. The church services, we want them to be just right. We talked later this, earlier this week about how we can make these services just right. When we have a family gathering, we anticipate for a long period of time and we plan so it will be just right. The fact of the matter is things are never just right. Remember the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? The porridge that was just right wasn't too long until it was all gone. The chair that was just right, it broke to pieces. The bed that was just right, Goldilocks had to end up leaving. But still it's something for which we strive and I think that's one of the reasons this story is so popular. Having it too hot, too cold, too hard, too soft, too big, too little, wanting it to ultimately be just right. Now in the gospel lesson today from Matthew, we see Jesus talking about how things are not necessarily just right. Jesus, our Lord, has talked about John. He recalls for them how John <clears throat> wasn't sure that what Jesus was saying was correct. John had baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. At that point, John was sure that Jesus was the Messiah. Remember the dove said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, as that dove descended? Well, the message of Jesus was not exactly what John had in mind. So when John was in prison, before he was beheaded, he sent some of his disciples to see Jesus and ask him, are you the one we should uh, be, we are have been expecting? Are you the Messiah? Or should we look for someone else? Jesus sent word back, well, just look what I'm doing. In other words, I'm the Messiah. And then Jesus talks about John in a little more detail. Jesus points out, that John said that people should be fairly severe. They shouldn't be drinking and partying and uh, eating all kinds of things. And Jesus says the people thought he was demon-possessed. I, on the other hand, said you should eat and drink and be merry. And people thought that I uh, was a glutton. They had a different message. And no matter what the message was, people didn't necessarily agree. Jesus talks about children. He said, some children play a flute, and they play the flute, and no one wants to dance. Other children play a dirge, a kind of a funeral hymn, and people don't want to cry or they're not sad. In other words, people don't always agree on what should take place. We always want to have things just right. We strive for perfection, but we don't always have it for very long, even if we think we've achieved it. And what might be perfection for one wouldn't necessarily be perfection for someone else. Jesus says and makes it clear that his message is different than John's, and yet both were being inspired and led by God. Different message, the same Jesus as Lord. It's been my experience that different groups of people different individuals, oftentimes talk about the good news. What is the good news? Now, here's my thought, that when people talk about the good news, they are thinking about, first of all, what's the bad news? And whatever they think is good news is based on what they term as bad news. So that means people have different situations. 
People have different bad news stories, so then their good news is often different. But the bottom line on good news is that Jesus, our Lord, came and suffered and died and rose again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him might not die but live forever. Now that, friends, is the ultimate good news. Yesterday was July the 4th. It's the day that we in the United States of America celebrate our independence. It's the day that the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, actually, it was voted on by the Second Continental Congress on July the 2nd and wasn't really signed until August the 2nd in 1776. But yesterday we celebrated. Now, that Declaration of Independence was there for several reasons. It was there to let the king know what had taken place. It was there to make sure the colonists knew what had taken place and that the whole world knew. Now, that Declaration of Independence for the king in England, that was bad news. For the colonists, for the most part, in the 13 colonies, that was good news. Now, it was adopted for several reasons. To rally the troops to make sure that our allies knew what was taking place, and to say that we have a new country. This is going to be the United States, ultimately, of America. And it was an opportunity and an attempt to say, what we have here is just right for the people of the United States of America. When we celebrate that, we celebrate how at that moment in time, in 1776, the people that put that in place, generally speaking, thought that was just right. Now, we have all these challenges facing, at this, facing us as a nation and as a world. And the coronavirus is just one of those challenges. But everywhere we look, we see challenge upon challenge upon challenge. We hear all kinds of bad news. In fact, uh, I was jokingly saying to Rita one night this week, uh, I've prayed, I've worked up my nerve, and I'm going to watch the news. <laughs> the point was, it's just always such bad news in these days. You just wonder how many people have died. What are the trends related to the, to the uh, virus? What's taking place around the world? What's taking place with other nations and our relationship to those nations? It's just a challenging, challenging time. Now, with all that in mind today and what was taking place in the time of Jesus when people didn't agree with Jesus, they didn't see how Jesus and John could be quite different, Jesus said, when it's hot and cold and it's hard and soft and big and little and you're trying to make it just right, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Now, a yoke is uh, normally a big piece of wood that goes around the shoulders of oxen and they're tied together in such a way that they can actually move a load together. Two oxen can carry much, much more than one oxen could carry. They go very slow and they carry a lot. Jesus is saying here, if you will yoke yourself to me, I'll help you carry the burden. You don't have to carry this burden alone. Now, what a comfort is that? We yoke ourselves to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Here at St. Stephen's, I've seen people yoking together to help carry the burden. But the ultimate yoking, as Jesus says, is to yoke ourselves to him. And then Jesus says, I'll give rest to your soul. He says in the translation that we use today, the yoke is easy. A better translation might be that uh, the yoke is good or the yoke is kind. Uh, and then our burden won't be as heavy to carry. We strive over and over to make things just right. And there might be periods of time when it seems just right. There have been moments in my life when I say, boy, if I could just stop time for a moment, this is just 
this is just, just right. This is perfect. But that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for very long. So when we are in difficult times, we need to remember that times will be better. When we're in good times, we need to remember that we should enjoy it because it won't always last. But ultimately, all things will be just right. They'll be just right because Jesus suffered and died on the cross, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven, has promised to return so that all things might be made new or be made just right. Let me read to you how our worship service begins when we are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. I'm reading now from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book. And I want to read it to you word for word. God, who is rich in mercy, gives us a new birth. In other words, makes us just right into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life makes us just right in Jesus. We're united with all the baptized in the body of Christ because they too are just right, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for life in the world. Thanks be to God, for God makes us just right. Amen. Our sermon hymn of the day is, O Beautiful, for spacious skies. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. It's a reminder of what we believe in the Christian church, a reminder of what we have believed for hundreds and hundreds of years. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, the water, the land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation. And direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations of the world as we celebrate this weekend our nationhood. Guide leaders in developing policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us, O oh Lord, from sin and evil that hinders relationships and our building of those relationships. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, O oh Lord. We pray for those who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. We pray for our world as we deal with the uh, coronavirus. We ask that you might assist people as they try to find a solution to this problem. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray, O Lord, for St. Stephen's and for all congregations around the world. Bless pastors and deacons and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine this place that we might notice the ways that your love transforms our lives. And help us, O oh Lord, as we think about how we might return to a different style of leadership that will bring us more closely to each other in the body and in spirit. Your mercy is great, O oh Lord. Hear us. We give you thanks for those who have died in the faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life until we are just right. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn for the day is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
We live in a world which is at times too hot or too cold. Sometimes it's too hard, sometimes too soft. Sometimes things are just too big, other times too small. But we know that Jesus our Lord says to us in today's gospel, I am with you, take my yoke upon you. You don't have to deal with these issues alone. I have raised up brothers and sisters, claimed in holy baptism to walk with you, and ultimately, I am yoked with you to help you along the way and bear those burdens. Now, knowing that, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope that you have a blessed week. Look forward to seeing you next week.